Word recognition and reading. This is a summary of the Psi246 Cognitive Psychology course from Macquarie University and this was made by me. When reading words, we attend to the orthography, which is the spelling of the words, the phonology, which is the sound of the words, semantics, which is the meaning of the words, syntax, which is the rules for combining words, and finally discourse processing, which is the making of inferences and is needed to understand the text using context. All of these are tested using reaction time tasks, which are speeded response tasks, such as lexical decision task, whereby individuals are asked whether the word is real, semantic categorization task, where participants are asked about the meaning, naming task, in which participants are required to say printed words out loud, and a strip task, which is to name the color of the font. And there is also semantic interference effect um, interjected into that task. Semantic strip test. It was found that, that there was greater interference with incongruent color association with word distractors than color unrelated words. So for example, sky for blue is greater than put for blue. Augusta Nova and Ferran in 2014 found that this interference effect was not reduced by phonology, but it was based on meaning, that it was a semantic thing. It wasn't based on the sound or rhyming. Kinoshida et al. 2018 found that semantic retrieval is controllable. Thus, this is not automatic. Phonology. So as previously stated, this is the sounding of a word, the sound of a word. Automatic phonological activation is the retrieval of words and basically the question to ask is whether is phonology retrieved in silent reading and how is this linked to semantic word recognition? Frost, 1988, proposed the strong phonology hypothesis in which phonological representation is necessary or mandatory in reading. And this is shown through homophones or similar sounds effects in semantic categorization and mask phonological priming. Similar sounds, Van Orden 1987 stated that homophones or words that have the same pronunciation but are spelt and mean different things contribute to a homophone interference effect where participants made more errors to homophones in semantic categorization. Mask phonological priming was experimented by Russell et al. 2006 who found that phonologically identical non-word primes had faster processing when the primes were similar in orthography, in spelling, but not phonology, because uh, phonology is automatic. Thus proving the previously stated automatic phonological activation. McClellan and Rumelhart, 1981 created the interactive activation model. There were three level detectors, which included the feature level, letter level, and word level. There were excitation and inhibition that occurred for both top down and bottom up. And there were features that were inhibited to recognize the letters and words quickly. Word superiority effect. This is the performance of four letter word recognition, which is said to be better when letter strings form words, as opposed to when they just form gibberish. Perceptual identification task. This is the identifying of a letter, which is easier if it occurs in a word context. Slot coding. This assumes that letter position is coded precisely and cannot capture similarity between words with letters in the word order. A letter in the wrong word order should be seen as a different word. Transpose letter, TL priming effect. In mask priming, response target, for example judge, is faster if primed by transpose letter, jug D, than by substituted letter prime, jump P, aka when the slot is wrong. So sometimes, even though it is spelt jug D, we may automatically think judge as a result of this transpose letter priming effect. Phonemes are the smallest units of sound, which are represented by graphemes or letter clusters, which correspond to single phonemes. Orthographic depth is the mapping between graphemes to sound, which could be ambiguous. There are deep or opaque 
orthography, where the spelling to sound are highly ambiguous and inconsistent in English. There are also shallow or transparent orthography, where spelling to sound is predictable and consistent. An example of deep or opaque orthography is in the English language when there are rules and there are exceptions to all of these rules. So for example, we don't read all letters the same way since there are silent Bs, irregular pronunciations, and pseudo words or non-words. Most readers can read these, but they require a lexical mental dictionary. Dual Route Cascade Colt Hart et al. 2001 proposed that there were two main routes between printed word and speech and it required orthographic analysis. It was cascaded since activation at one level is passed to the next. Non-lexical or route 1 grapheme phoneme rule system is a single step process and depends on the frequency or typicality of the word, how often the word is used. So for example, when I see the word Canberra, I say it as Canberra, even though it's spelled Canberra. But I pronounce it as Canberra and perceive it as Canberra because that's just the way we say it. It's just the Australian slang. Lexical or Route 2 and 3 includes using lexicon and semantic and or just using lexicon only to develop the word representations which are stored in orthographic output lexicons. For lexicons and semantic, the word encodes meaning, while for lexicon only, it bypasses semantic systems. So for route free, it's basically if you don't know the word, you can still make out the sound of the word. So for example, I could say Westminster, but you probably don't know what Westminster is, but I could say it out and you probably could say it out as well, reading the word. Connectionist triangle model. This proposed that there were three sides to word reading, which included orthography, phonology, and semantics in the reading of any word. There's a direct orthography to phonology pathway and an indirect pathway through word meaning. Semantic knowledge has the largest impact on inconsistent words because of longer processing time. And plus we are creatures of meaning. We want to understand the meaning of words, not just the way they sound. Types of dyslexia. Dyslexia are impaired reading ability. It could be acquired due to brain damage, such as stroke, causing individuals to be unable to read. It could also be developmental, whereby the individual always had dyslexia. There could be surface dyslexia, which is where there is intact non-word reading, and individuals with this condition are poor at reading irregular words. So for example, patient KT just wasn't able to read out irregular words, words that weren't familiar. So again, the idea of familiarity is important. And there is phonological dyslexia, where the individual has intact word reading, but they're just poor at reading non-words or fake words, so like just gibberish words. And there is deep dyslexia, which is similar to phonological dyslexia, but they make semantic errors as well. So they may, for example, read tulip as rose, even though these don't rhyme, but they're semantically similar, they're both flowers. Wallums et al. 2007 looked into surface dyslexia and saw that it was due to damage in the semantic system. There was a strong association between impaired semantic knowledge and surface dyslexia in dementia patients. The eye and reading. Eye tracking. So cameras and um, a computer program is used to track how the eye moves and controls what is seen. Sarcades are ballistic movements which are impossible to change direction and they take 20 to 30 milliseconds to complete. They allow individuals to perceive uh, more than 8 characters but you can't really see anything during a sarcade though. It, it's just tending to skip common or short predictable words. Fixations. They usually occur around 250 milliseconds and this is when information is extracted from the page. This is when your eyeball is still and just extracting the info. Regressions are infrequent right to left movements of two to five characters. There are end of line sweeps which make single long saccades from end of one line to the beginning of the next. And there are perceptual spans, which are effective field of view that extend three to four letters to the left, 
fixations and up to 15 letters to the right. But this depends on uh, one's written language style. For example, English and many other Romance languages and Germanic languages read from left to right, but Hebrew reads from right to left. Chinese could read from left to right, right to left, or top to bottom, and yeah, as in, just have to bear in mind the way in which people read. In summary, we covered orthography, phonology, semantics, syntax, discourse processing, semantic strip tests, automatic phonological activation, homophones, mask phonological priming, McClellan and Rummel Hart's 1981 interaction activation model, word superiority effect, perceptual identification tasks, slot coding, transpose letter, TL priming effect, phonemes, graphemes, orthographic depth, Deep, opaque orthography, shallow, transparent orthography, dual route cascade, coat heart at all 2001, dyslexia, surface phonological and deep, dyslexia, connectionist, triangle model, eye tracking, saccades, fixations, regressions, end of line sweep, and perceptual span. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.